Now that we've covered the basic concept of what a CHR and skin file are, let's go ahead and make them inside of Maya. To begin, I'm going to switch to the Rigging tab, go to Skeleton, Create Joints, and holding down the X key, I'm going to snap it to the World Origin. I'm going to go into Quad View, and I'm going to press and hold down the X key once more to snap it upward, and I'm going to do it once again. The one thing that's important to remember is actually that we're working into centimeter units. So this could only be about 11 centimeters high. We need to change that and make it a little bit bigger so then we can actually see it inside of the world. I'm going to click on the second joint, and you can see it goes up 6 centimeters. Let's go ahead and change that to 50. I'm going to choose the nub joint, and I'm going to actually change that as well to 50. The interesting idea behind this, if I go back to my main view, is that unlike other pieces of, or other objects inside of Maya, these are actually relative to whatever their parent is. So if you look at this joint, it says 50, but it is actually 50 off of it, and then this one is 50 as well. It's not actually offsetting from the world origin. So it's something to keep in mind. Going into the hierarchy, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this to BIP01, a naming scheme that actually comes from Max, and CryEngine uses Max naming schemes quite a bit, so I just like to push them over and use them inside of Maya as well, so everybody knows the same joints. We'll go use this one, BIP01, underscore, underscore, pelvis. The reason that we use underscore underscore is actually because on export, the first underscore is deleted by the uh, exporter itself. So a solution is to put two underscores, and therefore when you export it out, it actually looks like this. And the final one that we're going to do is call this one bipo one underscore underscore spine 3. Next, what we need to do is make some sort of geometry that can be encapsulated around this. I'm going to go ahead and create a cylinder at the base. I'm going to go into quad view again, and I'm going to move into the front. Holding the D and V key down, I'm going to snap my axis to the base, and then I'm going to hold down the X key once again to snap. I'm going to click the R key. And with the middle mouse button, I'm going to scale it out. Holding my right mouse button down, I'm going to select vertex. I'm going to choose the top vertices. You will notice, though, that I was able to still select the joints. So what we need to do is we need to roll out the selection and disable joint select. So now if I come in, right mouse button, and click Vertex, it won't select. I'm going to hold down the V key and snap it to the top. And now I'm going to go back into my orthographic perspective. What I need to consider now is actual geometry and how it bends. As it stands, technically speaking, the uh, geometry, if we took it into the engine, it would bend like this. This doesn't really suit us all that well. So we can notice in the middle that we actually need to be able to create some sort of a hinge, kind of like an elbow on a person or a knee. The easiest way to do this is to actually create an edge loop. So if I hold down the shift key and right mouse button click, I can see that I have an insert edge loop tool. I'm going to click that. And then if you use it, you can actually see that you can create an edge loop wherever you're clicking your left mouse button. I don't actually want to do that. I wanted to show you a more precise way that we could, re re we could be right in the middle. So clicking the options, I can now go in and choose multiple edge loops. And what I want to do is I want to choose just one. I want one edge loop. And if I click, it automatically puts it in the center. If I press the 4 key, we can go into wireframe mode, and now you can see that the joint 
and the actual edge loop marry up perfectly. So I'm going to disable that again. I'm just going to do the relative distance. I'm going to go into my front view. I'm going to create two spots in the end so it has some sort of a hinge that it can work with. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in, I'm going to remove the history. because it piles up after a while. So if I go into Object Mode, Edit, Delete by Type, History. Now you'll see that it's all cleaned up. I want to apply a, a Fong shader to this as well. And we'll call this Render underscore so, the interesting thing behind this is actually this will not be what we export out with the skeleton. And it's very important to understand that. So, we're going to call this render underscore msh. And next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually create a polyplane and make it as a triangle here. And that is what we'll export. I'm going to go ahead and create a polyplane. If we go to the settings, we can see that we can change the subdivision's width and height. Now let's go ahead and delete history again. And this time what I want to do is actually put it in up with the pelvis. So if I hold down the V key, I can snap it directly on the pelvis as it is. The reason you do this is because the BIPA1 joint should actually have no weighting applied to it. It needs to be the pelvis. And another trick that you may want to use is if you go to the attribute editor, you can see the draw style and you can change it to none. This is similar to what we have seen in the past with the skeleton. And this way you only see it from the pelvis up. Putting this up here, I'm going to call this proxy underscore msh. And we're going to give this a custom Fong shader as well. Crawl this one proxy underscore sub. And we're going to go ahead and just freeze the transformations and delete the history on both of these.